If your plan is to sell your business and live off the profits in your golden years, in your retirement years, you, know, you want to think again. You know, because up to 80% of businesses will never sell. And that's according to the Exit Planning Institute. And for me, when I take a look at this, you know, this is very concerning because a majority of business owners' net worth tends to be in their business. So when it's time for them to retire, their net worth is stuck in an asset that cannot be easily liquidated. Hey, hey, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Christopher Fu. Wherever you guys are at, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Succession, which is brought to you guys by Maven Bridge Capital, a private wealth management company serving Orange County, California. So I apologize. I've been kind of out of the loop for a little bit. I have been on vacation, thankfully and fortunately, uh, my wife and I just got back from vacation about a week and a half ago, and we were able to go back to Paris and Scotland. And for those of you who love scotch, who love whiskey, I definitely encourage you, if you haven't already, go out to Scotland. It is such a beautiful country. The people there are just so wonderful and so nice. Um, everywhere we went, you know, people were friendly. And so I love the super, super peaty scotch. And what that means is it smells like a fireplace. And if you drink it, it's like you're drinking firewood that's been burning for hours. And I don't know what it is, but I just love it. It's definitely an acquired taste. And so with that, we went to an island uh, right off of Scotland called Isla. That's I-S-L-A-Y. And that's where you're going to find the best peatiest scotches in the world like Lagavulin, Lafroy, Ardbeg, Banahavin. Those are just a few distilleries and also Brulati that we were able to visit. And I was just in heaven, in heaven, you know, and it just gave me a much deeper appreciation for the scotch that I love so much. Just seeing the, the process and, and just being in awe and thinking, wow, I drink this thousands of miles away, you know, at home or at a restaurant and just to be able to see where that whiskey and how that scotch is made and the birthplace and just to be there. Oh man, it was it was such a great experience and I would have to say that it was my most favorite vacation that we've taken and Scotland is definitely my most favorite country thus far that I've been able to visit. I mean, just again the people there were so friendly. Um, you know, Isla is an island, and there was about only 3,000 people, I believe, is the population. So when we were driving around, there's only one road that goes around the whole island. Um, you know, the opposing traffic would wave to you. And at first, my wife and I were like, wow, that's, that's different. We don't see that at home. You know, and so we started doing that. We started to, to wave and, and start the wave first, and then they would wave back. And, you know, that was just so cool because, you know, it's a tight knit community. Um, definitely everyone there knew each other and they know who's obviously visiting, but who's from the island. So, again, if you're just looking for uh, a great vacation where you can kind of relax, um, enjoy the scenery because the island is beautiful. There's sheep running around literally on the road um, and you love scotch and you love the peaty scotch, go to Isla. Um, if you don't love the peaty scotch, I wouldn't recommend it too much. And, and you know, funny story is one of the tastings that we went to, uh, there was a gentleman, part of our, our tasting, and he had his first class, and he was like, oh, I don't like, I don't, what is that? And they're like, it's the smoky stuff. And he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. And in my head, my wife and, and the other people in the group, we were talking later we we're like, dude, you are in the wrong spot. This is the place to go where you want the peaty scotch. You definitely got to go to Spyside or the Highlands in Scotland if you want more of the sweeter, the Macallan tasting uh, scotch. So, but it was a great experience for him. You know, we got to talk a little bit. Um, you know, he was on a trip by himself uh, all the way from, uh, I believe it was Kentucky, which was really cool to, you know, meet another fellow American and just you know bonded over scotch so 
again, I, I, I love scotch and just wanted to share that with you guys. So if you guys have the opportunity, um, go check out Scotland. So enough about, you know, what I've been doing, uh, taking a little step back from the, the podcast for a little bit, just now getting back into the swing of things. Uh, I'm definitely excited, you know, looking forward to the rest of this year. It's been just a crazy, very fast paced year. And a lot of things are happening over here at Maven Bridge Capital. So definitely excited about that. But in today's podcast, I wanted to talk about some of the things that here at Maven Bridge Capital, what we focus on and how we help our clients and hopefully pass on some tips for you guys who may not necessarily be thinking about these things right now because they're so busy, but hopefully it sparks some interest. So again, here at Maven Bridge Capital, we focus on helping women and small business owners with all of their financial planning needs, tax planning needs, as well as holistic wealth management. And one of the topics and things that I, I think is important to point out is in regards to business owners. And specifically, what I want to talk about today is, you know, why your business is not your retirement fund. I think a lot of business owners, and myself included, you know, we get so busy working in the business, working on the business, that we just don't have the time or really set aside the time, to be honest, to think about the longer term picture because our focus is how can I keep growing revenue? How can I make sure that the business continues to sustain and grow and not suffer and worry about my employees and this and that? So there's a lot of different things that, you know, come in from the day to day that really don't give business owners the, the time to really think about, well, you know, should I, should I have a contingency because I'm banking on my business as being my retirement fund? And most businesses do, you know. Most businesses, most entrepreneurs, you know, they don't set enough, you know, in profits to sustain themselves in retirement. You know, since they, what they do is they commonly reinvest a lot of that money back into the business, right? Again, we're mostly worried about making business profitable and not focusing on our personal finances. And the goal for most business owners, again, is once the business is profitable and you're ready to leave, sell the business cash out and that's your retirement. But the problem with that is that's not always a safe bet. You know, because if you don't save for retirement, you could be making a huge, huge, massive mistake. Because again, not having that plan in place could really hurt some things. Right. And because again, if your plan is to sell your business and live off the profits in your golden years, in your retirement years, you know, you want to think again, you know, because up to 80% of businesses will never sell. And that's according to the Exit Planning Institute. And for me, when I take a look at this, you know, this is very concerning because a majority of business owners' net worth tends to be in their business. So when it's time for them to retire, their net worth is stuck in an asset that cannot be easily liquidated. I mean, think about that. You know, you work so much your blood, sweat, and tears goes into your business, your business is your net worth, and you decide at some point you want to retire and fi finally, you know, enjoy the rest of life, and you can't sell it as easily, right? Because there's a lot of things that come into play when selling a business. So even if your business is the 20% that will sell, Again, the selling process itself, like I just mentioned, is not for the faint of heart. It's a really tough process. It can take years and years of hard work, you know, making your business buyer ready. So because, again, of information, the financials, you have to be prepared. And, of course, you being the seller, you want to get yourself the best deal possible. And likewise, the buyer wants to get the best deal possible for as cheap as possible to buy your business. So again, you have to remember, you know, this should be a sign that if you're only focusing on your business finances, then you need to start to take notice of that and start to make some adjustments 
and really prepare and plan for, you know, what is the next step uh, in, in, in retirement. Now, one of the ways that you can really help kind of prepare yourself and start to think about that the business is not your retirement. I, I always look at it when I speak with my business owners is that if we can sell the business, I like to look at that as more of icing on the cake because of the the risk. There's no there's no guarantee if you're a young business owner and you plan on working in this business and growing it for the next 15, 20 plus years, there's no guarantee that the success that you found in your early years will continue and translate into the later years, right? Hopefully that's the goal that you continue to be more successful and sell it for a lot more profit than what it's worth in today's dollars. But business is tough, right? That's that's why not a lot of people do it, right? If everyone, if it was easy, everyone would do it. That common saying goes. So again, we don't know how the business will potentially be worth or how much it'll be worth down the road. So that's where I like to say your business, if you're banking on it to be part of your retirement, think of it as more icing on the cake. Now, some of the ways to prepare yourself is, first of all, you know, look at diversifying your investments and your assets. Because again, if you have your heart on selling the business, you still got to have a plan B. You got to have a plan B. So again, if like I said, plan A doesn't go well. And so when you work with an advisor or you're planning something out, you know, you can definitely include the business as an asset and part of that retirement planning picture, but you should also diversify your assets by investing funds outside of your business, right? Because asset diversification is a smart move, really, honestly, for anyone that's saving for retirement. Even if you're not a business owner, right, putting money into a 401k, putting money into some type of savings, that's what uh, employees do. So as a business owner, you know, that's a, a, a smart move that you should also be making too. Uh, because when you have investments in different assets, you're also minimizing the risk in your portfolio. Because again, if you think about your business as part of your total household portfolio, and you have all of your eggs all in your business, you're putting your future at a greater deg degree of risk, right? They always hear that saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, typically people think of that as stocks, which is true. But also you have to think about it if you're a business owner in the sense of your business. If you're reinvesting and pouring all your resources and cash back into the business, well, that's a huge, huge risk to your future. So you want to be able to minimize some of that longevity risk and diversify. And some of the best type of retirement accounts that business owners can really look at and consider are simple IRAs, SEP IRAs, individual IRAs, solo 401ks. You know, these are different investment account vehicles that you can start putting some of your cash your assets aside rather than reinvesting everything into the business and through the business you know you can offer these retirement plans also to your employees and even use business funds to contribute to these accounts so again in a way it's a win-win for the business it's a win-win for your employees it's a win-win for you it's a great retainer as well for your company as far as benefits that you're offering to your employees now, the other things that you want to consider is, well, you also want to mitigate your tax liability, right? Because as a business owner, you have an advantage with investments that are outside of your business. A prime example is being able to fund your retirement accounts with profits from your business, right? Taking your profits from your business and then funding your retirement account. Basically, in that scenario, what you're able to do is you can lower your business taxable income and maybe even potentially drop a tax bracket, right? Think about it. I mean, if you take your profits and you, you don't put it into a retirement plan that can help lower your tax bracket and you just store that money in your business account or you reinvest it back into the business account, it's still profit. It's still taxable. So one way that I help business owners is that by setting up these retirement accounts, we can take those profits 
put it into your retirement account, it's still your asset. It's still going to grow for your long-term future, but you're also getting the benefit of a tax deduction and you're saving money on taxes. And I always like to tell people it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you save. Not that's, and that's not just applicable to the amount of money you're putting into a savings account or your 401k, but it's also the amount of money that you're saving on taxes. There's ways that I can help my clients minimize their tax liability. I'm definitely going to recommend it because that's more money back into your profits, right? So you definitely want to learn how to invest business profits, which can really help minimize your tax bill. It can help grow your retirement savings. And more importantly, it can help diversify your total investment portfolio so that you're not all in one basket, such as your business. Again, there's multiple advantages of being a business owner, right? You can work for yourself and generate income that can be unmatched compared to, honestly, working for someone else. Uh, but however, since many business owners don't separate their business finances and personal finances, I noticed a lot of problems can really arise when trying to plan for retirement. So that's where I wanted to talk about this and bring this up. Because again, that's one of the things that I do when it helps helping my business owners and helping them improve really their financial well-being. Because again, I know that you guys who are business owners are in the trenches and in weeds and so busy focusing on the business. I wanted to bring this up because I, I, it's, I believe it's really important um, if you haven't thought about it already, think about it. Right. Think about the amount of risk that you're taking if you're considering that your business is going to be your retirement. You want to start to diversify. You want to start not having all your eggs in one basket and hire a financial planner. You know, reach out to me if you guys have questions and want to talk about this more. Um, this is something, like I said, that I focus on with my clients. I, I help, again, small business owners and women and our, our number one priority is making sure that we're taking advantage of all the different opportunities for our clients and more importantly, saving them from taxes and saving them and trying to minimize uh, certain degrees of risk. So again, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Succession. I hope you guys enjoy this episode for business owners. Again, remember shouldn't consider your business as your sole retirement fund. You have to start thinking about diversifying because again of the risk in doing so. And for you guys, if you're not a business owner, it's okay. Again, take this mentality that I just presented with your own personal finances as well. Diversify, diversify, diversify is always key. If you guys know someone, a business owner that could potentially benefit from listening to this episode, please pass it on. You know, I don't, I, I can't count the number of times where I've met business owners and they bank on their business being their retirement fund. I think I read a stat a couple months ago about only seven, uh, sorry, seven out of 10 business owners don't have some type of retirement plan or retirement strategy in place. Right? Because the way you also have to think about it, too, in this scenario, if you're the key man, you're the main business owner, what happens if you die early? You have an unexpected death and you don't even get to reach retirement. Right? What happens then to your family, your kids, your wife, your husband? How can you proceed on if you are banking on putting everything into the business? So that's where definitely having a financial plan, having a strategy becomes really important to think about all of these different probabilities and different outcomes so that you can feel a lot more reassured, a lot more confident and get back into the business and do what you do best without having the stress lingering in the back of your mind thinking, oh God, I really need to consider a retirement plan or I really need to start diversifying, right? Have an advisor. You guys have CPAs. You guys have attorneys. Hire a CFP who's going to be on your side as well and help you go through this entire process uh, because that's what we do. That's our job is to make sure we're providing you the best advice and giving you all the tips and tools that are going to benefit you and your family. So, again, 
Thank you guys so much. My name is Christopher Fu. I am the Chief Executive Officer and Private Wealth Advisor over at Mavenbridge Capital out in Orange County, California. If you want more information, you guys have some questions you want to shoot my way, please send that over. You can email me at hello at mavenbridgecapital.com. You can also find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And our handle is mavenbridgecapital.com. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys find this information useful. And wherever you guys are at, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you guys so much. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Securities offered through Kestra Investment Services, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Kestra Private Wealth Services, LLC, an affiliate of Kestra is. Maven Bridge Capital and Kestra Investment Services are not affiliated. Kestra is in Kestra's do not provide tax or legal advice. The opinions expressed in this commentary are those of the author and may not necessarily reflect those held by Kestra Investment Services, LLC or Kestra Advisory Services, LLC. This is for general information only and is not intended to provide specific investment advice or recommendations for any individual. It is suggested that you consult your financial professional, attorney, or tax advisor with regard to your individual situation. Comments concerning the past performance are not intended to be forward-looking and should not be viewed as an indication of future results.